Hello everyone, welcome to Higher Source Tarot. Thank you for joining me and I am really looking forward to co-creating with you today. I want to thank everyone who has subscribed, been watching, liked and commented on my videos and if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and if you hit the bell, you'll be notified when new videos are posted, which is about every week. Now if you're new, normally I am doing readings under each um, astrological sign, but today I'm doing a general reading because someone asked me to, to read about COVID-19 and this global dark night of the soul. Okay, we are collectively going through a dark night of the soul as, as an entire world body. So I want to talk about that. And I'm as we do the reading, I'm going to explain a lot of what I understand the dark night of the soul to be my study and my research. So here we go. Let's talk about how this pandemic is going to affect our world as we know it as we move forward through this dark night experience together. Okay. So I've been asked a few times to do this reading and I wasn't going to and then I just became inspired. So. Here we go. So this is our present position, the Two of Pentacles, and the immediate influence is the Ten of Cups. In the destiny, we have the Seven of Pentacles, the more distant past, the Empress, the more recent past, we have the Queen of Swords. Coming towards us, we have the King of Cups. We are collectively represented by the world and the Five of Swords, excuse me, Wands. Um, energies future energies are the ten of wands and then we have the tower as the outcome and we also at the bottom of the deck we've got the five of swords here very interesting um you know it, you can't say it better than the tower because that's all about change we've got multiple change cards in this reading now um you know let's let's talk a little bit as we get started here about what some of this means now of course we have all elements represented and what's interesting to me is that we have the world and the tower as brackets here. They're very opposing energies, except that they both are about a conclusion of a cycle so um, and about change. So um, as we begin here, we have this two of pentacles, and it's a lot of indecision, which makes sense. Our present position, we have medical professionals scurrying around rampantly trying to figure out how to contain the virus, how to mitigate the virus, and uh, uh, medical professionals, but also government leaders too. How do we mitigate this from spreading? But then the next challenge is, as we move forward, how do we, how do we detect it? How do we understand its mutations? You know, now we've gotten information that it's spreading to animals, and what does that mean next? We ignored some things. I don't know about in your area, but we had um, something called Triple E or EEE -E -E that became present in the area where I live in the fall that shut down many things, and it was a mosquito-borne illness. And there were multiple sporting events. Anything outdoors was canceled. Um, you know, ceremonies, concerts, all that stuff was canceled. We had warning that something like this was coming, and I, as a collective... People ignored that. Now, if you're watching this video, you're on an ascending journey. You are getting information. You are one of ascension. The issue is that the greater whole, many people don't understand the dark night. They don't understand ascension. And so what that can mean at times is that we can feel a little bit isolated for those of us that are spiritual, that understand we're in a mystical soul's journey. So... You know, our current position is a lot of indecision. Again, there's financial uncertainty. Um, but what I see here with this Ten of Cups is a coming together, right? This is all about change. It's all about a new cycle beginning. And it's a time where we're becoming more tolerant, more understanding, pulling for each other. And those are those are fairly obvious, you know, observations. However, when we talk about the dark night of the soul, there's two stages. There's the night of the senses, that's the first stage, and the night of the spirit. We are coming out of the night of the senses. And that first stage was written about, the, the whole concept of the dark night of the soul was written by John of the Cross. He was a Carmelite priest in Spain in the 1600s. And he 
became united with an, another Carmelite in the business of reforming the Carmelites. And he saw things that needed to be changed to better serve God. So he goes on this, this Reformation crusade and the Carmelites didn't like it. They didn't want to be reformed and they beat him and they tortured him and they threw him in a cell. And when he was alone in the dark, that's when he wrote about the dark night of the soul. He could not understand how God would have forsaken him. Everything that he had done was for the God as he understood God. And he could not begin to understand the unfairness of this all, right? So what ended up, what ends up happening in the dark night of the senses is that we lose who we thought we were. We lose every single part of our ego identity, but it's not replaced with a new identity. And that's where it gets scary for people. And the best thing that you can do to expedite your journey through the dark night of the senses is to ask yourself this question. If this were to continue, what quality would I need to sustain this? Would I need for my own survival? Is it more faith? Is it more strength? Is it more tolerance? When you can maturely and honestly answer that, that will expedite that journey into the night of the spirit. And that's where we ascend. And we'll talk about the night of the spirit as we move on here. But it's a very, very important facet of the dark night of the soul. Because if you stay in the night of the senses, that's when people give up. That's when people get um, so mired down in darkness, they can't transcend. And so you, do, you, you can't afford to stay there. You can't. So um, our destiny here is the seven of pentacles. And again, he's very contemplative and, you know, this is a huge part to do with our medical researchers contemplating what do we do next? What, what comes next for us? And the thing is, the key to the dark night of the soul is self-knowledge. When you know yourself, you know the universe. So for all of us as individuals, our journey here is to know ourselves, to ask mature questions because when we have whether it's a God of your understanding or a universal, you know, consciousness, when we believe in favoritisms and unfairness, it's very, very immature. So we need to, as a collective, ask mature questions. What do I believe and why did it, why was I given this life? What is my purpose here? And when we can do that and transcend into that night of the spirit, that's when we can inspire other people to rise to the occasion to become better people you know there's there are a lot of people that get very mired down in that shadow side because they are almost incapable of telling the truth and that's that's another part of this when we can live an integrous life when we can live an honest life that's when we transcend and we, and we can rise through this now, in the distant past, we had a very strong economy. Much of the globe did. Much of the global market was strong. There was new growth. There were new beginnings. We're, where I live in the United States, we're coming into a big election. And so there was you know, lots of um, money being poured into campaigns and things. And rather probably frivolously, quite frankly. And a lot of decisions that were made without a lot of um, long-term thought. You know, there were certainly, like I said, warnings that we were coming upon something like this and it just was not taken care of. It was not taken seriously. And so I feel like this is almost like the universe, the queen of swords coming in and cutting things away from people to understand that. Because part of the dark night is the death of the ego. And when we die into spirit, we get scared. We want to cling on to what we think we are. And it's not the stuff like, you know, the important stuff is not what career am I going to have? What marriage am I going to have? It's honestly, those are not the important questions to ask. It truly is about what do I believe? What are the characteristics that I need in order to transcend? Um, so I think a lot of the frivolities and things are being cut away. I also think people are going to be living more of a Spartan lifestyle where they have really had to look at where they've been putting money, looking at 
what things that they just don't need and getting onto more of a minimalist plane. And that doesn't mean that we lack because when we ascend spiritually, we never lack. We don't feel bankrupt. And I think a lot of people are using the material plane to try to feel abundant. And that's not where our power lies. Now, I like stuff also, okay? I like nice things. I'm not going to lie about that. Um, they make me feel free. You know, I guess that's part of it. And it's, it's fun to me to buy things and to shop and to decorate and all that stuff. But the truth of the matter is, if I am not one with my spirit, those things will be never ending. I will develop a disease of more. And I guess that's what I'm getting at. For those that have developed the disease of more and it's never enough, the Queen of Swords comes in to cut that all away and to, to tell us, basically, sit your ass down because that's not what's important here. So <clears throat> in the upcoming energies here, we have the King of Cups. Now, this to me is, I feel more of a, even though he's a very, he's an emotional energy, and I think a lot of us are feeling that depth, you know, at our core of our own humanity, but also our own capacity to love, and that comes through the soul. Your capacity to love comes through the soul, and we see it with many, many spiritual teachers. They've all gone through this dark night. When you look at, um, for those of you that like the Dalai Lama, when the Tibetan monks were absolutely slaughtered, the, the Dalai Lama was asked, you know, what, what are your thoughts on this? And the, the person who was interviewing him was doing it to goad him. And he said, my thoughts are of compassion, compassion. And that's all he said. Um, if you look at Tat Nhat Hanh, he was put into exile for over 30 years from Vietnam because he came to teach about spirituality he came to teach about Buddhism and they would not let him re reunite with his family. They were angry with him. So I do feel like as we go through this, we're going to have many spiritual teachers who come forward. And that may be you on your own, you know, earthly plane in your own community. Because it's a an individual that impacts the community, that impacts the world. Okay, so... Speaking of the world, um, that's what we have coming up representing us as individuals. So this may be you, um, you know, in, in your own individual world, you, you may be experiencing changes. Certainly, the dark night of the soul doesn't happen at any particular time. It can come, you're walking down the sidewalk and all of a sudden you're completely upended. Um, it is a time of new experiences, of opening up. Some of you that are into meditation are going deep into your meditation practice. A new phase is beginning for all of us. But with that completion, we're going to be feeling amazing. Um, it's, it's a time to start on a new page and to wrap up, to complete a cycle. And for those of you that have a hard time telling the truth, and it's okay to, to, to say, you know what, that is me. I have to go to a therapist in order to be honest with anyone. You know, and it's all the it's all the subtle things like, you know, I don't really care about that. Oh, it doesn't bother me, but it really does. Those are all lies that we tell ourselves. It's time for us to go deep into living honestly. And the thing is, the reason why we evade this is we're afraid of our own power. But the other piece of it is when we step into that shadow side is that dishonesty offers many choices. The truth offers one choice. And so people can be lured into and mired down in dishonesty because, because they're afraid of not having all these different options. But the truth is what helps us ascend. So for you, if you know that's been you in the past, you're going to be, you are going to be transcending. If you know you've been dishonest, for you, you are going to be attaining a different level in your journey. You know, your desires will be achieved because the dishonest stuff, our biology records that on us. Now, there's going to be some continued chaos in the world. This is for sure. There are going to be some issues with the economy, um, not only with recession, but also global markets having a lot of fluctuations, a lot of imbalance, and this is going to last for a while where there's just going to be imbalance, um, pure and simple. There is a certainly a push to reopen 
the world and if it's not done in a calculated way, it's going to re-enter a phase of needing to be locked down again if it's done prematurely. So that's one of the balances. The other piece of it is a lot of uncertainty about this virus. It's still not fully understanding it, the complexity of it, the ability to mutate, the ability to now be transferred into animals. And then there are questions too, even about insects. I don't want to cause alarm, but the truth is, um, you know, there's a lot of confusion. There's also going to be a test for um, immunity. So in the next, you know, within the next year, there will be tests given to see who actually has had it. Um, so you may have had it right now and thought you just didn't feel well and you actually had COVID-19 and just didn't realize it. So that will be something that won't necessarily be mandatory unless you're in a certain, certain professions that may be mandated. Um, like if you're in the travel industry, if you're in medical professions, things like that, that may be mandated where you have to be tested to see if you have the immunity to it. Um, but it's definitely going to be something that's not going away anytime soon. So, you know, so in this, in this, um, um, just sort of our inner fears, our future influences too that come at us, um, we do have this 10 of wands. So this is feeling burdens, feeling like we're carrying the weight of the world on our shoulders. Um, I do think too, for people that live in the United States, there's certainly our healthcare system is max. There's been, you know, a decade at least of uncertainty with healthcare and reform in healthcare that hasn't been completely successful. And it's going to continue for a while where there's going to be just a lot of, um, I think, challenges with working with the healthcare system to really get it into a place where it's sustainable and is, you know, something that provides care for everyone in a way in a way that people accept because there's so much division with healthcare in the in the country that I live in but for others that may not be quite as true but there's still going to be burdens there's just going to be a strain um you know and it, it is the ending of a cycle but that's going to continue for a while several you know into the next year you know I think into 2021 it doesn't mean that we're still going to be locked down and restricted but those strains are going to be felt because, you know, once businesses are brought back, schools will be impacted financially. Some of the money that was given this year is not going to be there. Okay, come July, budgets for schools are re restructured and there's going to be less money. So that means some people are going to be losing their jobs. There's just going to be displacement. So the final card in this is the tower. So interesting, right? The tower with the clarifier of the five of swords. Um, you know, the five of swords is all about taking on opponents and battling and then giving up that fight. I do feel like even though there's some fluctuation within global markets and there's going to be some areas where we're not completely cohesive, I do feel like some of the world or the international kind of politics of things are definitely smoothing out. However, you know, this is demolishing something. This is the universe coming in and demolishing something to bring in something better. Um, you know, and, and the other thing is too, right now we really, sorry about that. You guys, I had a call that disrupted. So I had to link my two videos together, but just to continue the reading and to conclude the reading here, um, so we end with the tower, and this is all about releasing oppression, okay? So places that have been oppressed may be feeling through this a rise, okay? It's, a, it's not only a collective rising of energy, but it's also about releasing old, old attitudes and behaviors. So, um, you know, we have, we have not necessarily seen it here with our... Um, you know, with our president, there's been quite a few press conferences that have been aggressive. And whether you're a supporter or not, there have been, you know, multiple con press conferences with reporters that have ended in aggressive ways. Um, that, that may be ending in this election year. There's definitely, I think, it's ripe to have an election of someone new coming into office here in the United States. I think there's a lot of questions 
within the local governments and the states that have really been hit hard with this about how the federal government handled it and that there was much indication that this was going to happen and there just was not enough preparation. It's a huge shakeup. I think the United States is going to be changing fundamentally in terms of government. Um, but the reason's always good. You know, I, I mean, this pandemic is a horrible thing to live through. I mean, so many hundreds of thousands of people have died. But the other part of that, too, is for some people, that's the path of least resistance they would not have wanted to make the changes necessary to live around this virus for what could be, you know, a couple of years before it really gets fully managed. Um, so, you know, the, the things that we can do are certainly follow the medical professional's advice, wash our hands, n not develop a, a false sense of security by wearing gloves, because what I'm seeing people doing is wearing gloves and then just not taking them off and transferring the germs everywhere. So it's definitely on a smaller scale is learning how to, you know, how to live a little differently and tailor our lives around something nobody expected. But on a bigger scale, a much larger scale, these flames are a symbol of burning away the ego and the arrogance. Okay, this is all about dying into the spirit and allowing our spirit to guide us. So, like I said before, you know, your self-knowledge, when you have self-knowledge, you know the universe. Um, so, I'm so, I'm so glad that I did this today. I find it to be very interesting reading, and um, I can't make this stuff up, right? I'm not that great at dealing cards to be able to come out with an outcome like that. So, be well, and know that you are on the right path. Don't be disheartened by this, but know that things are changing for the better, and so what can I do on an individual level? Well, I can quiet my mind. I can, you know, help people. I can forgive others. I can forgive without necessarily having to incorporate that person into my life, but I can let go of whatever negativity or, or, or toxic energy that I have towards them. And when we do that, that's how we ascend through that dark night of the soul. So I love you so much and thank you for joining me today and I'll be back again in at least a week.